What if I told you all that you had a superpower? Like Wonder Woman lot, you know? <laughs> For real. A superpower that at any moment you could calm your mind and transform any adversity that you're currently facing, whether that be in life or in work, into your next big opportunity. You see, in my experience, I found that a calm mind is a receptive mind. And a receptive mind is an open mind. And an open mind is a creative mind, a mind that is able to not be reactive, but responsive. In 2010, I was a fresh graduate and I managed to land a job with the Obama administration. Yay, right? It was at the United States Department of Energy, and the environment was challenging. Everything was super fast-paced, and I was working with some of the best engineers, scientists in the world. You know, it was an honor working alongside these folks. But at the same time, I had this syndrome. Maybe you've heard of it. It's called imposter syndrome. It's one of these things when you have these questions that come up. You start to doubt yourself. You start to say, what am I even doing here? Do these guys even respect me? I don't know what I'm doing. This all came to a head one day when our chief of staff of the office had just came back from a safari in Kenya. And he told us he brought us all back a gift that represented how we worked in the office. So at, at one point, I'm like, excited. Finally, I get feedback. Because you know, if we get feedback, usually it's because you did something really wrong, OK? <laughs> or it could be really good, because I finally get to know how I fit. So it's 8 AM, our morning meeting. The sun is, sun is shining through the, uh, the window that's facing the National Mall. We're all seated around the rectangular table. Chief of staff is at the head. So he's calling us up one by one. He calls up the budget advisor first. The budget advisor is standing next to him and he says, Here's an ox. He gives him a wooden statue of an ox. Because you are strong and dependable and able to carry your weight and the weight of everyone else in this office. Gives him the ox, he goes and sits down. He then calls up the deputy chief of staff. He comes up, hands him a draft. You get the draft because you're able to stick your neck out for everyone and see above the frame. So he's doing this. My heart is pounding. I have that, that syndrome, you know? Maybe those questions will be validated. Maybe I'll finally be the one that he sees as you know, doing something here. So he calls me up, the last one. As I'm stepping next to him, he reaches down into his left pocket and pulls out a wooden figure about this big. He sets it on the table. He immediately falls over and picks it up and hands it in my direction. And he says, Axel, this is for you. An ostrich. <laughs> because you think you can fly, but you never will. My heart has hit the floor. I'm angry, I'm humiliated. This guy just... And to make matters worse, I had to take this thing and put it on my desk like everyone else. Proudly display it <laughs> for the rest of the day, look at it. But at least I knew one thing. I knew where I stood. That. I don't even stand at all. 
It was awful. You might be, this is, the, this is the point where I stood up and ran to his office and gave him that letter of resignation. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. It took me five years. Five years to finally make the change I needed to improve my life. I'm sure you will probably go through something like this. That's why I'm sharing it with you. This imposter syndrome thing is real. Or you may have gone through something like this before. When I finally resigned in February 2015, I went on an 18-month research sabbatical where I got to explore the question, how can I generate happiness for myself and reduce my own suffering so that I can do the same for others. You know, I learned a lot on this journey, but the main thing that I learned was that happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. This has been proven. And I stumbled upon a research study by an American uh, psychologist out of Berkeley. She basically found that outside of our genetics, the next biggest influence on our overall perception of happiness is the choices we make. The choices we make. And if the choices we make bring us happiness, to me, choice equals power. Okay? Choice means power. And power means creativity, creation. If you are able to be empowered, you're able to create the future you want. This notion was kind of echoed in this. You might not have heard this guy before, but he's a well-known neurologist and Holocaust survivor. He says that between a stimulus, something that's causing you trouble, and the response that you have, there's this space in the middle. You gotta realize that there's a space you can choose, and in that space, Lies are our power to choose how we want to respond. It might seem simple, but it's quite big. And in that power, in our response is our power, is our freedom, is our growth, is happiness to me. So that got me thinking, you know, what's the common thread here? What is the common thread? about this creation thing that to me the most the first point of creation everything you see in this multiverse was started here started with a thought that's the first unit of creation don't take my word for it new breakthroughs in the fields of neurocardiology the heart and mind science and neurogastroenterology are showing that the brain does not have a monopoly on thinking the heart and the gut can do some thinking of their own. And many times, they're sending orders to the brain. This research has been seen in countless number of books on emotional intelligence and positive psychology, specifically business-related books. Business leaders from some of the most successful companies are leveraging the multiverse within them to make some of the best decisions, to make more creative decisions, make more innovative decisions. So if that's the case, how can everyone, how can the average employee, how can the average student leverage their inner multiverse as well to get out of their adverse situation? Luckily, there are lots of tools out there, but they're quite kind of dense, okay? <laughs> and what we've done at Humany is really kind of brought those tools into a simple framework. And we utilize some, some tools and experiences I call an empathy map. And some basic principles of uh, cognitive psychology as well. So enough about that. Y'all want to try it? You want to try some of these tools? Okay, let's try some. So this is a really simple tool called the empathy map. But before we do that, let's uh, maybe get calm and relax in our chairs. You can put your... Anything you have in your hands, you can put it in your lap or on the ground. And just let your weight sit in the chair. Let the chair 
take you. You can take a deep breath in. Blow it out slow. And just relax. You can even look down at the floor. Close your eyes even. You feel like it. As you're relaxing, your eyes are closed. Bring to mind in the last maybe three months a challenging situation, whether that been at work with a colleague or something in life. Let it come to mind. Let it come into your body, mind. Continue to relax. If you have your eyes closed, continue to keep them closed. Now you want to pay attention to five different things. You want to take yourself out of that situation and go behind almost a video camera, as if you were looking at yourself in this challenging situation through a video camera. You're looking for a couple things. One, what are you doing? What is the physical thing you're doing? Are you running? Are you shouting? Are you pushing something? What are you doing? Capture that. Next. What are you saying? What are you saying to this person or to, to your colleague? What are you actually saying? Almost if you could capture it in a video camera. What are you thinking as this situation happened? What is going in your mind? What are, you, what are the thoughts that are happening? Next, what are you feeling? What are those unpleasant feelings that are coming up? Capture that. And last, what are you needing? Given that you're feeling, you're having these unpleasant thoughts and feelings, what are you needing? And it's not something tangible, maybe. It's more of a value, possibly. You got that image? Hold it. Good. You can open your eyes. You can look back up here. Now, for example, what if I would have had an empathy mapping tool? And this is just training wheels. Sometimes you can use this just on the spot. What if I would have had a tool like this when I was called an ostrich? Would I have realized maybe that what I was doing was choosing to sit in the back of the room when the boss was telling me to come sit next to him? Would I have realized that, you know, I was saying to my colleagues that, you know, I don't know how to do this, or you know, this task seems impossible. Maybe I would have realized that I was thinking that I don't know what I'm doing. I'm telling myself that. I'm thinking I'm not experienced. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling maybe hesitant and just burnt out. And at the end of the day, what I need is support. I need clarity and maybe some fun. Crying out loud, right? So coming back to you, if you were to use something like this, think about that situation you had and map out those things. Those are your centers of intelligence. This is where you're going to find that next creative solution. And I believe if you do this, this will lead to some sort of new approach to looking at your challenge. So what if you did this the next time you had something small like planning your day or firefighting a situation at work. What if you did this in partnership? You had something more than blame and judgment to communicate about. You had actual needs to say in the work. What if our organizations use this as a way to make their employee experience more engaging, more productive employees, more innovative employees? What would that look like? Imagine. You know, and I challenge you today, Before the challenge, you must remember one thing, that, no, you remember that. That will help you develop the feelings. <laughs> That's probably the most important part of the, the graph, is the feelings list, okay? It's a really hard thing to do. I find people struggle with that, and also the needs, okay? But again, the thing, if you're going to take away anything today, is remember that, that calm mind that you have, 
leads to a receptivity. Okay? That receptivity will lead to openness, and that openness will lead to creativity. And that's what you need to get out of that situation. So it comes back to you, please, choose to use that superpower of choice to choose calmness and open yourself to that inner creative intelligence that you have. Thank you.